Right, well, let's go to Psalm 122. Why don't we do that? Psalm 122. Psalm 122. Amen. Psalm 122. Paul said in the book of Philippians, Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to say the same thing to you again. For you, it is not grievous, it's safe. Well, every time I read that, I remind myself, it's okay for me to repeat myself to you. Amen. Over again. So this is something a few years ago that I taught on. But then, you know, and I, you, you ever just thought you knew a subject? You thought you knew how to uh, rebuild an engine. You thought you knew how to uh, build a house. You thought you, and then you meet somebody that does it better. And then you, you pick up on it, and you go, well, hey, that, that's a better way. That's oftentimes what happens to me with Scripture. I will teach something, and then I will find out something more about it later. And that's what happened to me on this trip. It, it, my eyes were opened up. As a matter of fact, I will tell you, you are truly home only when you find your tribe. Can I get an amen? And the word tribe is all through Scripture. And it didn't even dawn on me when, it, when we think of the Native Americans and stuff that, it, uh, that the, the tribe, 12 tribes of Israel. We say it. Matter of fact, the word tribe is used over 2,000 times in the Bible. And it never computed in my head to think about the, the tribes that are actually here in America and, and around the world. So as I was reading this, Psalm 122, are you comfortable? Oh, it's been a while. Y'all get up. Man. Thank you. Psalm 122, verse 1 says, and this is King David talking. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I told somebody this this week, and, and it has a lot to do with life, period. But when you stick to something, when you stick to a job, when you stick to a, a marriage, when you stick to a church, when you stick to the things, when you stick to something, then you get stability. You get stable. And a lot of times people will come in and go out, come in and go out. But when you stay on something, you get stable. This is why David said, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house. Amen. To the church of the Lord. Stability brings productivity, which results in fulfillment. And a lot of times we don't realize that our jobs, our careers, the things we do, when we are, uh, when we are producing, you feel fulfilled. You feel blessed. And I'm watching this in the life of, of my children and the life of friends. When they start producing, it, it's amazing to me how much blessed they are. So when David said, I was glad when they said, in other words, I'm stuck on the house. I love the house. Then he said, our feet shall stand with, within the, your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. It's a group of people that are packed in there. Whether the tribes go up. The tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. Why did they go up? To give God praise. For there are set thrones of judgment. We'll talk about all this in just a minute and break it down. The thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love you. Peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will now say, peace be within you. Amen. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek you're good. Father, I thank you for the Word of God. Lord, open my eyes, my ears, my understanding as I share with your people to do the same. In Jesus' name. And everyone say, amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We're going to talk about this word a lot here for just a few minutes. The tribe is a group of people connected to one another, connected to a leader, connected to an idea, connected to a culture. For thousands of years, human beings have been part of one tribe or another, and a group needs only two things to be a tribe. First, a shared interest and a way to communicate, a way to connect with one another. Listen, one thing I've learned that we are part of the tribe of Judah. There were 12 tribes, but we're part of the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah was the praising tribe, the tribe of uh, loud. They were a little bit <clears throat> rambunctious. That's the little country church. Amen. So we, we're part of the tribe of Judah. We're part of the clan. The clan of David, when I look at it and realize we came from that seed of David and the family of Jesus. Can I get an amen? 
So if I said to you, Psalm 122, verse 1, out of the Message Bible says, when they said, let's go to the house of God, my heart leaped for joy, and now we're here. Old Jerusalem inside Jerusalem's walls. Jerusalem's a well-built city, built as a place for worship, the city to which the tribes ascend. So when you read the Bible, you got to realize that Jerusalem is a place where God is, and so we have to figuratively here in Houston decide, okay, this is where we go. As a matter of fact, it's where the tribes ascend. It's where they come together. All God's tribes go up to worship, to give thanks to the name of God. This is what it means to be Israel thrones for righteous judgment, for set, uh, for set their famous David thrones. Our interest here in Psalm 122, 1, I was glad when he said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Why did they go? They went there to worship. Worship is an outward expression of an inward love. When you love, you're going to express yourself. You can't help it. I mean, listen, I have a couple of Harleys. I love Harleys. I love the sound of potato, 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 potato. There's nothing like, if you want to know what a Harley sounds like, just say it. Potato, 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 potato. That's a Harley. If you ride anything other than that, it goes, that's it. <laughs> but but I love I love scooters. I love hot rods. I, I've loved horses. I, I've loved people. It's an outward expression. But when you love God, you got to express yourself. And, and sometimes I give in. I say, I know your personality says that you've got to be withdrawn. But yet I have watched you at ball games. Get excited. I heard you screaming. Amen. That finally a draft choice came to the Texans that may make a difference. And you got all excited. And you come to church and you cannot express yourself because somehow you solemnly decided that at this moment I'm a quiet person. I'm going to call you on that. I'm going to say something about that. You you go to them slot machines and you 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 hit that little button and all of a sudden ching 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 and that money starts falling and you realize you won. You don't sit there and go, mm, thank you, Jesus. I'm gonna call you on that. So when you come to the house, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. We're going up to worship him today. Can I get an amen? amen. Listen to me. Our, 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 this writer said this, Aaron Applefield said, the writer in Western civilization has become not a voice of his tribe, but of his individual, individuality. This is a very narrow-minded situation. In other words, often when we as uh, Americans, Western people, read the Bible, we see the individual, we forget the clan, the family, the tribe they're connected with. And that messes everything up. When you read the scriptures, not of just an individual, but of their tribe, their family, the Hebrew people, were, in other words, kidnapped. They were exiled. They were brought over into Egypt. And there in Egypt for 400 years, the Egyptians tried to change the tribe, the Hebrew people's culture. This is the children of Israel. They're a tribe. Understand that. And so they tried to change, they tried to change their language. They put them in a place called Goshen. That was their reservation. You follow me? They put them there and they tried to change, they tried to change their food. As a matter of fact, when the, when the children of Israel were moved in, heading toward the promised land, they said, we don't like it here. We want to go back to Egypt where there's leeks and onions. Listen, Hebrew people weren't eating leeks and onions until they got to Egypt. So what we did, we tried to change their culture. We changed their food. We changed the way they dressed. Amen. And there, here's Jochebed. Jochebed was the mother of Moses. And she hid the little boy when they were killing all the little firstborns and taking them out. She hid her son, you know that, in a little basket. And he went down the Nile River. Amen. It's dangerous on the Nile River. There's crocodiles and all kind of things. But, but God protected that little boy. And then all of a sudden, Pharaoh's daughter draws him up out of the water. His name means to draw out. She drew up little Moses. She said, somebody's got to nurse him. Well, all the, the Hebrew ladies who had lost children had milk. It's just natural. So she went and she found a woman named Jochebed and said, well, you nurse this little boy for me. Guess whose little boy it was? 
It was Jochebed's little boy Moses. She took that little boy, she nursed him, and she taught him. Even after all these years of them trying to change the way she talked, the way she ate, the way she, she dressed, trying to change her culture, she, she refused it, and she taught him about the Hebrew. And she taught him about God, the God of the Hebrews. Amen. And she brought that little boy up. He remembered it. Therefore, when he saw an Egyptian beating up a Hebrew, that's my tribe. That's my people. That's my clan. And he went after the Egyptian, and he killed him, and he buried him. The only problem was he didn't bury him deep enough. A lot of things that you bury in life, bury it deep enough. Can I get an amen? That dog can't dig it up. And then Moses was found out as a, being a part of that tribe, and he ran. Even though he was a son of Pharaoh, adopted son, he runs. So we, when, when you're reading this, you, you start picking up from where I just came from. My goodness, there's such parallels here. I mean, I was just sitting there in the Navajo Nation, and very quickly, for, for you white folk like me, We've often thought, you know, that we gave them land. We, we all say we. We gave them land. We gave them place to stay. We, we finance them. We look after them. Now, that may happen in some tribes, but that 18 million acres known as the Navajo Nation receives no financial help from America. None. What they get is land, but they don't own the land. Therefore, when you go there, you're, you're like me. I was appalled every time I've gone to a reservation. I, I've seen trailer houses and run-down places. Like, why, why do they do that? I mean, they ought to take better care of this stuff. Amen? They ought to look after it. Well, if it ain't my land, I ain't going to do anything to improve it. Because if I do, they'll yank it away from me. You build a nice building on the Navajo Nation, the government will take it away from you. You find oil on the Navajo Nation, they'll move you off of it. They find coal there, they move you off. They've done that for over 250 years. So we're trying to remove their, and I'm, I'm not standing here trying to defend them, but what I am is a little upset with our government because it looks like the same bunch of Egypt doing it to the, the Hebrews, putting a thumb on them, and then they regulate them. If you use too much electricity, too much water, well, we'll just cut you off. And so I sat there and I say to myself, well, there's got to be a better way here. I mean, I can bless you and do things for you, but, but the government's never going to let, and, and this just was wild. I'm just going to throw this at you. In listening to him, I picked up on this. They believe there's going to be an uprising someday. And God's going to get on that side, and they're going to get that land back. And I'm cool with it. I mean, I'll just sit back and say, you know, I, I, if anybody needs reparations, it would be them. Amen. Because I've just seen what happened to them. And, and one of the ladies, uh, uh, Young, that was, I was there with, she was South Korean. But she identifies as Navajo. Because she's adopted. So you know what my heart did when I met this adopted young lady. And I've never seen hair that long. It came down to the back of her knees. And she sings for the Phoenix Suns in Navajo and English. And, and I think, my God, look at the talent at this place and what you're doing. And so I read this. In being set free from slavery, they kept talking about going back. And you read about this. I want to go back. I want to go back there. And God's trying to bring them into the promised land. Can I tell you something? You were delivered from slavery. You were delivered from fear. Amen. You were set free. You were brought out of the gutter to the utter. Amen. All those things happened in our life. But here's what, what we did. We said, but I want to go back. I want to go back to the bar in which I came out of. I want to go back to the world in which I was part of. And here's the pull on us. We're the same way. We're just like the Israelis here, uh, the Hebrew people. We've been set free and pulled out. But every now and then we think about where we came from. Do you realize you've been born again? Amen. You don't have, you, your life is not yours anymore. You can't go back to where you came from. That world's over with. Aren't you tired of throwing up in commodes? Do you not forget? You don't remember coming out of that world? Amen. And keep pressing on. A lot of times we come out of Egypt, but it takes a long time to get Egypt out of us. A lot of times we come out of the world, but it takes a while to get the world out of us. Amen. But so Jochebed, man, she, she poured it into it. So tribes, a tribe is a group of persons having a common interest. Sitting Bull said, I wish it to be remembered that I was the last man of my tribe to surrender my rifle. I like that. You know why I like that? Because on the, the, the Navajo Nation and reservations, the guns are illegal. You can't have a gun there. You can't own a gun there. So only people that own guns the, on the reservations are bad guys. Uh -huh. We're blessed, ain't we? 
Man, don't forget how blessed we are. So here we are, a company led by a chief. That's that's a, a tribe uh, with a staff. Mo it, it speaks of the staff the, that the chiefs are. The, they always had a staff with Moses. He had a staff. Man, and on that staff, they would often carve on the staff all their history. They would they would put on their history on the staff. So so when Moses walked out there, and he had the ten plagues. He had, he had frogs on his staff. He had, he had, had darkness on his staff. He had big pimples on his staff. That's the bulls. He had, he, he had uh, ten plagues all over his staff. So when Moses walked out to the Red Sea, God told him, stretch out your history. Stretch out your testimony. Stretch out your staff. And he stretched out his staff over the sea, and the waters parted. Don't forget you all have history. You've got testimonies that God's done for you. When David went against Goliath, I reread it again this week because I've always loved the story of David and Goliath. The Scripture says, David fastened on his sword over his tunic. And tried walking around because he was not used to them. This is Saul trying to get David to wear his uniform. David, 16, 17-year-old boy, putting on a grown man's uniform, he said, I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his, in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in a pouch in the shepherd's back, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Man, I can preach on the staff. I can preach on the smooth stones. I can preach on the shepherd's bag. Hey, man, I can preach on the sling. Everybody needs a sling and a song. David approached Goliath. He grabbed up his staff. Hold on a minute, man. And did you know that Goliath came out for 40 days yelling, fee, five, fo, fum, I spill the blood of Israelites come. Didn't say that exactly, but something like that. He defied the children of Israel for 40 days. If you read, he put on, he, he had shields on his shins. He had a breastplate on. He had a helmet. Talks about his helmet. The helmet covered the forehead, came down and covered the cheeks. For 40 days, he came out looking this way. But when David came against him, guess what he was not wearing? His helmet. <laughs> and David saw he ain't wearing his helmet. He ain't put his helmet back on. So David ran out to toward Goliath with his five smooth stones. You can't throw a crooked rock, a uh, jagged rock. You've got to have a smooth stone. Picked up them stones. He's good with them. Grabbed up his staff. And when he held that staff up before Goliath, you know what he was saying about his tribe? You see this history? You see that lion? You see that bear? You see that blank spot? That's fixing to be you, baby. Amen. He held his staff out. He grabbed that smooth stone. He threw it in that sling. Amen. He threw it because here's Goliath. He has not got his helmet on. Amen. So David's running toward Goliath before he can ever get his helmet on because he sees a weak spot. Grabs the stone, slings that stone upside the head, popped him upside the head. Oh, my goodness. And the, well, you never read this. But there was a, a little feller that stood in front of Goliath known as an armor bearer who carried his shield before him. David wasn't fighting one guy. He fighting two. And the only way to bring two down is bring the big one down first. So when David hit him upside the head, whooped him upside the head, Goliath went down. And when he went down, he squashed well, it don't say it. I can't prove it, but you can't disprove it. He squashed a little feller below him. If you were flying over in the Goodyear blimp and looked down, all you'd see was one man and four legs. Squashed him right there. Took his head from him. Amen. Put it, hung it up in his tent right next to the lion's head and the bear's head and probably a nice 12-point. So a Hebrew would carve those victories to make sure people knew about it. According to the Homer's Dictionary, the tribe was the Shebet, was the major social unit that comprised the makeup of the nation. The tribe was comprised of clans. And I know when you come to America, we, we're so rebel-minded and independent-minded that sometimes we forget that a church simply is a tribe. Amen. It's a group of people that come together. It's family of families, a cluster of households that had a common ancestry. Amen. So it's important. The clan was comprised then of the individual households and families referred to as the also known as the father's house. Amen. So that was it. When you come together, you know, we're part of the same tribe. We may be different color, different ethnicity. We may come from a different background, north, south, whatever. But when we come here under the banner of Christ, we're all the same. 
Amen? Amen. So to understand, it's a church. So there was a nation, and within the nation, there was a tribe. Within the tribe, there were clans. And there's this universal family of God. Within the family of God, there are local churches, tribes. So I, I, when I gather with pastors, I realize they're the leader of a tribe. I don't get, well, and inside these tribes, there are these clans. You know, Bethany had a clan yesterday, and Pastor Joseph have a clan. And those that do things here, yeah, Tuesday night, there'll be a prayer clan here. Amen. And together with all a part of the same tribe. Can I get an Amen. So then David said, I was glad. I was glad when somebody said, let's go to the house of the Lord. It was because it represented the tribe getting together. It's persona. Every church is different. Every church has a persona. I know folk get upset at times and say, you know, why are all the churches different? I'm glad they're different. I'm glad, I'm glad that if you feel like this is your place, this is where you need to be. But if I'm not the voice that you need to hear and the people around you, you don't like them, go find you another tribe. Look, I mean, hit the portal. <laughs> For those of you who understand the, uh, uh, college football now, go get in the portal and see if another pastor will pick you up. Hey, man, go try somewhere else. Hey, maybe it can happen. Well, I'm tired of being here. Get me out of here. <laughs> each, each. Uh, so listen, and that's why there's Baptists and Church of Christ. Prep. I don't get upset with them. I don't agree with all of them. But I don't have to. Amen. I just got to keep doing what God's called me to do here. James 1.1 1, 1 says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes. They're scattered abroad. Amen. So there's these tribes. And the tribe had a testimony. Verse 4 of Psalm 122 says, where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord unto the testimony. Amen. Uh, the NIV says, that is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord God. Amen. The statue given Israel. Another version talked about ordinances and law. In other words, when they went up into the house, first they came, went there to worship. That's what we do. We worship. But there was another reason why they went. Amen. It was a testimony to give an outward sign to open acknowledgement or a public profession. The Bible says we overcome the devil. Well, how do we do it? By the word of our testimony. So when you're in this house, you testify. Your presence testified here today. Being able to talk to others and worship here, you testify. This is my tribe. This is my house. I love God. Amen. I've come together here. This is important for me to be here in the house today. Amen. So that, that's it. You're sharing that. You need to testify. You need to testify. I'm sure yesterday, Bethany, a lot of the women testified. Amen. About what God has done in their life. You need to tell somebody. Amen. You need to share what the Lord has done in your life. You need, you need a staff, amen, with a history on it reminding you. Well, I often remind myself of the deliverance and the things that God has done for my children and my family, how I got my kids. You know, when that young lady, the, the, the South Korean lady yesterday who was Navajo, she talked to me and we got talking about adoption. Bingo. Immediately we connected because we understood it. And she said, though I was raised here, this man, uh, Pastor Elson, who is a Navajo, he took me and he's my father, he's my pastor, amen, so now I'm Navajo. And she sings it and, and talks it, and I sit there and I think, dear Lord, help us to understand the Word of God to become identifying more as the children of God. That we act like we, we are your kids, amen, and you are our daddy. So there is a when and a why to go into the house of the Lord. When we go, we declare we make profession to others. Your witness is connected to going to the house of the Lord. Listen, you're known by where you go. You're known by where you go. Wherever you go, people know you by that. Amen. And then there was a, a why go to the house? Because it's a statue. By the way, it was a law. It was a law for them. Now, we don't have to. Oh, no, well, we live under grace. We can stay home, watch it on TV. Or not watch it at all and act like we watch it. Amen. So, but, but it was a law for them. They had to go. It was an ordinance, and it was an authoritative direction. It was prescribed practice. It's just what they did. And I'm glad for you, church, this is what you do. Amen. You want to, this is what we do. I'm going to get up on Sunday. I'm going to fight that devil because I know he's going to fight me on Saturday morning. Listen, anytime God blesses, Satan's messing. I say that to anybody that gets born again, anybody who decides I'm going to start serving God, watch out. There's always going to be a fight. Why would that devil let you go? Why would he let you go so easy? And I hear from every believer that decides, I'm going to start serving God now. And as soon as they do, bam, this happens. Family comes against them. The finances come against them. This, and they say, I, I can't do it. And then they back away. That's your time to press in. That's your time to curse that devil privately. 
Yeah, the preacher said it. Curse him privately. Amen. Just get along and say, you saw something, you go ahead. Well, that's what I do. You ain't got to, but I'm just saying. We also go there to learn the laws of God. What do the laws say? I said privately, H. We go there to, to, to learn, to pick up. Man, if you didn't learn anything while you're here, I, I'm, I'm not doing good. I'm not a good tribal leader. I'm not a good coach. I'm not a good pastor. I'm not a good teacher. If you don't learn something when you leave here. I was hanging out with a brother that I, you know, Pastor Richard Umbro. I hadn't, Richard and I had, really hadn't hung out together in 20 years. We see each other. We ain't hung out. And he looked at me, and, and, and I was getting up out of, out of that bed. And I was oh! And he looked at me, and he said, hey, I've never seen a buzzard eating a, a moving cow. And I looked at him, and I said, what'd you say? He said, you taught me. I've never seen a buzzard eating a moving cow. And it came back to me. I taught you that. He said, yeah, you did. But I forgot. But you reminded me. Thank you. And I got moving. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. We, we here to I'm here to teach, and if, if you aren't picking up on stuff, and you ain't learning things from me, then I'm missing it. I want you to learn to pick up on things like that. So the law, there's, there's things they came to the house, and they came there to learn. One of them was that they came to learn about the first fruits. When you go to the house of the Lord, you were to bring your first fruits with you. Now listen to me, and don't shut me off. Exodus 23, 19, the first of the first fruits of your land shall go, and you bring to the house of the Lord. Remember that their financial thing was what they could give from the cross. Crops, Exodus 30, or from their flock. Exodus 34, 26, the first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. The word first fruit, the best, it literally means the best, the, the first in place, time and order. The root word of first fruit was the head. When you give 10, the, the, head, the first fruit was the tithe, the head. When you give 10% of your uh, earnings to God, you literally are tearing the head off your finances. Did you know your head comprises 10% of your body? This is your tithe right here. And when you tear that off, it blesses the rest of the body. Amen. Therefore, the blessing is, so the tithe is the fuel that makes the tribe run. Let me just say it. If there's no finances, there's no future. There's no fi See, one of the things the government did to the, to the Navajo and other, they tried to press them down, make sure they didn't have enough finances to, to run the church. So if there's no finances, there's no future. So you've got to make sure it's there. The tithe is, is the rule of the tribe. It is not equal given. The Lord is demanding. It's equal sacrifice. Now, if I said to you, Proverbs 3, we would all use this verse right here because I quote it all the time. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge the Lord, and he'll make you pass straight. Oh, I preach that at funerals. I preach that everywhere I go. I love trusting the Lord. But see, we don't go on and read the rest of it. So if I trust in the Lord with all my heart, at least not on my own understanding. My own understanding says, I can't give the government this and then God this. Something got to give. I can't keep giving God this if I owe J.C. Penny that. Amen. And we lean back. But then you keep reading Proverbs 3, and it says, Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to your navel and marrow to their bones. Keep rolling. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So when Solomon starts this out, he says, hey, trust in the Lord with all your heart and all your ways. Acknowledge him. Here's our thing. When we tithe, when we give of our first fruits, we trust in God. See, I think God says this. I know you say you trust me, but can I trust you? Because I'm going to throw this test at you. And if you pass this test, then I know that you trust me. Because you give of your first fruits. And he walks on, so shall your barns be filled with plenty, and your presses shall burst out with new wine. Burst out. Amen. In, in other words, when, when you see that word bursting out, it means to expel. It drives out enemies. When I give, it takes the enemies out of my life. Amen. It's some, I, I don't, I, why you got to try to understand it? Why you try to understand? Trust the Lord with all your heart and all your ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. Lean not to your own understanding we're always trying to understand well if i could understand it then i would be i'd give my first fruits I, i'd be a part of the tribe see without giving you're not even part of the tribe you know because you're not even uh, uh, being a blessing to make sure that it takes place then he goes on to say i'll uh, talk about thrones psalm 122 5 here stand the thrones where judgment is given i'm going to start closing here joe amen judgment is given the thrones of the dynasty of david he mentions the word dynasty 
I think of this word. Does it end with me? Is it over with me? God, I hope not. See, being with, with Pastor Richard this week reminded me of the dynasty we started in 1986. We were youth pastors together. We worked with kids together, and some of them kids are still serving God. To, I've buried some of them kids. It's, it's been a part of my life to be here. And then, then the, the churches that I've started, that they, that they continue. I don't, I don't wish ill on any church that I've started. I want to see them continue. I don't want to see it die. I want to see it keep going. Amen. A dynasty is the succession of rulers of the same line or descent, a powerful family or group, a tribe, a church. It maintains. It keeps going. It doesn't quit. This thing can't stop when I'm dead or gone. This thing has to keep continuing. There has to be a, a little country church or a tribe that's whatever it's named that's like this. Can I get an amen? It's got a holy wild attitude that believes that faith is spelled R-I-S-K. Amen. That we risk in life, that we keep pressing on, that, that we fight against fear. Hallelujah. There has to be a, an understanding what we do here matters there. Can I get an amen? Amen. That it's a position for a considerable amount of time. I don't know. With David, God wanted to start a, a, a dynasty with him, and he got it through Solomon. He ruled all the way through to Christ. Amen. That's why I said we're the clan of David. We're part of that. Amen. I, I, I don't, somebody, I, I heard him say, I don't have friends, I have family. I love that statement. So I'm going to close with these principles of the tribe. Every person needs to belong to a particular tribe. Everybody. I meet people outside of here. Uh, a young man got saved here uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he was doing some diesel work on it with a guy, and, and the guy said, uh, he got talking, and, and this guy got testifying. This young man was testifying, and he said, man, I'm telling you something. God changed my life, turned me around. He said, well, where are you going to church? He said, well, I'll go to the little country church. He said, Pastor Jerry. And I hear that all the time, that there are people outside of here that aren't in church anywhere that need to get back in their tribe. They need to get back connected again. Because they'll say it, and I'll get a phone call. Hey, Pastor. Hey, Pastor. Can, would, you, would you mind, would you mind uh, 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 doing a wedding for me? Well, I ain't seen you in 20 years. I got a call from a young man the other day. He said, well, you do a wedding for me? And I said, well, son, I ain't seen you in a long time. Where you live? Iowa. <laughs> Hold on. You want me to come to Iowa and do your wedding? He said, you're the only pastor I've ever had. I said, son, bring your woman into Texas. <laughs> and I'll do that wedding for you. But I get it all the time. I get, I get to hear this stuff all the time from people. We do my funeral. We do that. And, and I'm thinking, look, you got a lawyer. You got a doctor. And you consider me your pastor. And you ain't hanging out with my tribe. Get your butt in the tribe. I said, hey, y'all watching me right now? Get your butt in the tribe. Mm-hmm. Every person needs to belong to a tribe. Our kids, we all need to be a part. You, you must live by principle and not by choice. Our principle says I'm coming today. It's principle that says that. I, it ain't cho choice tells me that if I don't feel good. Let me help you. You don't feel good. Let me be honest with you. Some of you don't look good. <laughs> but you still showed up today. Can I get an amen? amen? Get your war paint on and come on, sister. My destiny is connected to those in God's dynasty. So everything about my life is connected to people here. I found my job here. You, you find your friends here. You find your spouse here. You find your kids here. Amen. This is in the house. Number four, I'm responsible to hold up the testimony. Voice it. Share with people. And, and then the last point, there's no success without a successor. There has to be successors in, in, in every ministry here. Before, Listen, before you let go of, of this ministry, Josiah, before you let go of this, if God ever calls you somewhere else, raise up a successor. Bethany, raise up a successor. Pastor Joseph, raise up a successor. There needs to be success. I had to raise up succession. David, you got to raise up success. There always should be successors in our life. And, and here, here's this, this one little point I want to mention to you. What is painful to one generation is insight for the others. What was painful for my generation is insight to others. I had an outhouse as a kid. Picked cotton as a kid. Wore hand-me-downs as a kid. Our jeans that had holes in them, I can be honest, we were ashamed of them. My mama patched them jeans and patched them again and patched them again. And then I'd pass them down to my little brother, and then she'd patch them again. We didn't have holes in our jeans. You'd look poor if you had holes in your jeans. Nowadays, 
You ain't allowed to buy a pair of jeans unless they got a hole in them. Are you hearing me? But what if I said to you as a tribe, this row right here, this row right here, within one month, you need to reach at least five new people. What if I said to this row here, y'all need to reach at least ten people, because y'all been gone. Y'all, y'all, ten people. I need you to reach businessmen this week. I need you to go after some business people. At least five years. What if we put a demand on ourselves and said, in order to do the gospel, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. I'm on a plane flying back, sitting by a lady, and I look over at her, and we get to talking. And, uh, and I know immediately she's Muslim. Oh, I'm not going to sit there and be quiet. I said, hey, hey, sis, how you doing? And we get to talking. I said, well, where are you going? She said, I'm flying to Turkey. I said, my daughter, Jaleesa, just left Turkey. I said, did you know my daughter, she loves Jesus, but she loves Muslims. And I said, Muslim instead of Muslim. Y'all white folks say Muslim. They say Muslim. I learned that. And when I said Muslim to her, she lit up like a light bulb. I said, my daughter loves Muslims. She, she, she knows. I said, well, oh, we all need God. She said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I said, my daughter's in Jordan now. She said, I was born in Jordan. I'm thinking, only God could set this up. Only God could set this moment up. And we get talking about that, the change that Jesus makes in a life. And, and she's trying not to go there with me. She, she's resisting just a little bit because she has no choice. She's born Muslim. She ain't got no choice. It's Allah and all that other nonsense. Amen. But listening and getting to talk with her and opening up the door without being defensive. She said, we're not all terrorists. I said, I know. And we're not all Q Club's clan. <laughs> Let me close with this last statement. When you find your vibe, you find your tribe. When you find your vibe, you find your tribe. You might not like everything that goes on in the little country church. Maybe it's the music, the children, or the youth, or, or the pastor, or whatever. But when you find your vibe, when you walk into a place, you go, what? This feels good. They love bald people here. Amen. You too. They love bald people. When you find your vibe, you find your tribe. I love my tribe. I'm thankful for my tribe. Amen. I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.